welcome to another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Um, we're going to look at Sudoku today. Uh, this puzzle was uh, well, appeared in the Daily Telegraph yesterday on Friday, which means it's the diabolical uh, Sudoku. So this is a classic Sudoku, normal rules, it's just going to be brutally hard. And we'll see how far we get. Um, well, well, we will solve it, but I'm going to see firstly how far we can get using our classic notation. So, um, what, what I mean by that is that uh, where a 3x3 three three box can only contain uh, a particular digit in exactly two positions, so let's look at this box and where we can place a 2 in this box, you can see it can only go into two positions, so I'm allowed to make pencil marks in those situations only. Um, and we'll see how far we can progress just allowing ourselves that method. Um, go from there now. Inevitably when solving these very hard puzzles there can be you know, uh, slow moments um, it's unavoidable unless we were to very heavily edit the videos which I don't really want to do um, obviously we could do that, but I think it gives you a sense for the overall solving path and how difficult the various stages are if we sort of take it at normal speed. Um, so we were able to, this pencil mark, these two ones here are very helpful um, because that's going to lock a one into one of these two positions which allows us to place a one here make little pencil mark ones into this position, but same thing there. In these very hard puzzles, um, this sort of arrangement is quite interesting, because if I can lock another number into one of these cells, we might be able to use uniqueness um, to restrict the options for the other, the other position, so I'm going to keep an eye on that, and um, as we go through Five, six, seven, nine to place along here. Ah, okay, so there's a naked single in this position here. Five, six, seven, and nine are the only numbers left to place in row three, and you can see we have a five, a seven, and a nine already in column nine there, which means this has to be a six. Let's just make a couple of pencil marks up there and down here. So if we look at this column now, 2, 3, 4, and 8 to place. So 8 is limited to two positions. Uh, in that situation, I am uh, also mentally checking whether, um, whether either of those is restricted. For example, if, if we make this an 8, you can see that forces an 8 into this position. Now, if there had been an 8 in, in column 5, we could have instantly ruled out that option with very little extra effort. Um, so it's always worth um, it's always worth doing that if you get the chance, just to, um, especially on the harder puzzles, just to test that sort of thing. Mm. Oh look, we can make pencil mark sixes down here into these two positions, which actually resolves the six up here. Let me take us very much further. So again now, because I've now reached a point where I've got five in a Five in column two. I'm going to test that again. So uh, three, four, seven, nine to place. You see, this is a double on seven and nine. Um, three, and this is a double on three and four. I don't think we can quite make more progress there. That's annoying. Little eights in down here. looking at column 5 now, there's not many places left we can place an 8. We can place an 8 here and we can place an 8 here. So there's two positions for 8 in column 5. 
this is an 8. Whoa, that doesn't work, does it? Um, so there's two positions eights can go in column five now, and I was just mentally checking um, what would happen if this was an eight. Um, so let's just ask ourselves the question. You can see if this is an eight, um, ah, it's because I've marked that down wrong. If this is an eight, this is an 8, this is an 8, and this is an 8, which contradicts, that cannot be the case. So it's exactly what I was mentioning before. When you find uh, in these puzzles um, these opportunities uh, to, to bifurcate, I'm not suggesting you go along a great long chain of things, but it, once I spotted there was only two positions for an 8 in column 5, it was very easy to just mentally check um, if this is an 8, you can see this is an 8, this is an 8, and this is an 8. So we, we end up with a contradiction um, because if when, whenever we put an 8 into this, this square here, we, we, we force another 8 into the row and column, which is obviously impossible. So this cannot take an 8. Um, I might try and do some shading at the end of the, when I'm editing the video, just to really demonstrate that and hammer it home. Um, now, so that means this has to be an 8 down here, so let's put that in. Let's remove this 8, and I think that should allow us to now place 8s over on this side, like this. And it, this is very helpful now, because now we're actually going to be able to use the thing, other thing I mentioned at the start. Um, so we've now managed to lock the 8 into one of these two positions in this central 3x3 three three box. And you may say, well, why does that matter? Well, it matters because that has an implication because of these this pattern of 1s here. Because we have a 1, 8, 1, 8 here, we cannot have an 8 in these positions like this. This is impossible because if, if this was genuinely the pattern that we managed to deduce as being correct for the cross for the for the Sudoku, you can see that there are now two, two solutions to this puzzle. Because whichever way round we put these eights, we can simply swap them round, and we'll have another valid solution to the puzzle. So we know now this box is seriously restricted in terms of eights. We have an eight here that prevents there from being an eight in either of these two cells. The work we've done just suggests there cannot be an eight in either of these two cells either. So this square here has to be an 8. And look, that's beautiful. Now that's going to crack the puzzle, I think, because now the 8 in this bottom box is forced into this square. And that gives us a 6 and a 5 on top uh, as a bonus, um, which gives us this 6 over here. And I think we're now, we've now done the 6s. And in terms of fives, can we do anything more with the fives? Not immediately. One, two, seven, nine. This is a seven, nine. This is two, seven. And two. There's a lot going on in column eight now as well. And three, two, three, four to place in column nine. Fill in the 8 and the 1 in the middle. And I remember to do that, it gives us that 1 as well. And it gives us 1s down here. Three, seven, nine in this column. Ah, yes, OK. So again now, this, this square here, because of the 7 here, we can now place the 7 up here. That gives us a 3. Three nine, so this these two have to be two and four. Uh, this has to be five and nine up here. Two three four seven nine. This is always where I start to feel a bit stupid when I'm doing these puzzles because I'm quite sure there's going to be another obvious number here. 
but because I'm doing it on screen I might not spot it as quickly as you guys do. You can see now we have this um, this pattern comes up a lot. Um, uh, see these two threes uh, in these two positions and these two threes in these positions. Um, so that means that in rows seven and eight there can be no more threes um, because if we were to, for example, if we try and put a three in this position that's going to force a three here and here which is impossible. So we can now use that to make two pencil mark threes in this box here which isn't immediately useful but it is a little bit helpful because look, look at the effect that has on this box um, you can see that the threes in this box here have to appear in columns two and three. I have no idea where they're going to go. They're going to be in one of three positions. Um, but they're clearly in columns two and three. So I've got exactly the same effect when I combine that knowledge with this, these two threes. I.e. there cannot be any more threes when I look at this box in either columns two or columns three. So the threes are forced over into column one. And look, we have a three already in row two here. So this this square here, that has to be a 3, um, so we should definitely write that in. Uh, 157 to place, okay, now with combining that with this 7 here, that's going to have to be a 7 down here. 1 and 5 to place now, can't quite resolve that annoyingly. Okay. Um, oh, except I can because this 5 here. That five's forcing fives over into one of those two positions. So this this square here has to be a five, which means this is a one, and this is a one, and this is a one. Five, four, seven, nine to place. Nine, nine, this has to be a nine, yes, we've got nine here and a nine here. That forces that to be a nine. Oh, oopsie, I didn't I think I tried to put a nine in there and it thought I was placing a six. Hang on a sec. Nine. That's better. Uh, so that resolves this nine and this three. Which is this three here. Two, four into these positions. Three seven, two, seven, seven, nine, seven, nine. Two, ah, okay. Now column H is resolved as well. Looks like I think we're there. I'm going to be surprised if there's a sting in the tail here because it does seem to be resolving itself quite nicely. Um, it has to be a seven, seven nines into those two positions. Sevens. So we have to use this nine somehow. Nine, seven, nine. Yeah, yes, we can. We can use it's actually a similar trick to we did with the with the um the eights earlier. Um so remembering I'm just going to break my notation uh, code here and write in that this is 7979. Seven, um, if this is a 9, what happens? This is a 9, this is a 7, that means this is a 9, that means this is a 9, which immediately breaks again. So just very simple uh, checking on the, on, on the bifurcating line there using the fact that this could only be a 4 or a 9 um, tells us this has to be a 9. And that four, this is a four. Uh, nines into these two positions. Four resolves the bottom grid there. This is a four, this is a three, two, four, four, 
two, four. This must be a two there for. Let's tidy up some of the numbers that we resolved there. This, this square here obviously has to be a two. This must be a three, three, seven, 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 five, nine. Five, nine, five, nine, five. This is always the slightly startling bit, but I think that's that's going to work. And there we go. So another another very interesting puzzle. I do like these diabolicals. They are very interesting. They always contain a little bit, um, you know, a little bit extra on top of the say the super fiendish puzzle that you see in the times. Um, I think these diabolical puzzles are definitely harder um, and certainly worthy of a video. So I hope this was useful and gave you some pause for thought in your own solving. If you enjoy the, the videos please do subscribe to the channel and we'll see you again next time on Cracking the Cryptic. Thanks for watching.